nitrogen fixers are for sure up there with perma, perma bling, up with the uh, herb spirals and all the keyhole gardens, all these kind of things that have their place, but they're not always appropriate. And um, to really understand nitrogen fixers, uh, you have to understand the evolution of it, the environmental you know, conditions of it. So um, nitrogen fixation, the, the symbiotic relationship between bacteria and plants, um, it evolved in very, very poor soils, soils that are low in fertility. The bacteria were able to generate the fertility by becoming totally dependent on the plants for sugars. So it evolved in basically sandy, dry, um, bleach soils. With that understanding, we can see that they're not necessarily going to always be appropriate. So yes, Jeff Lawton is using them in Australia where it's dry, but you don't need them to generate fertility. What you need is biomass, and you can get biomass without going to a nitrogen fixer. Most nitrogen fixers can generate more biomass, but here I can get more biomass out of an ash tree than I could a acacia. So understanding what you're what you're trying to achieve it can be really important. So so essentially these nitrogen fixing leguminous trees, beans, leguminous trees, um, they are they dominate the arid tropical and they don't dominate our environment. So if you have nitrogen fixers growing in your native environment, then plant those nitrogen fixers. But if you don't, then you might just find more value in something else. So hopefully that makes sense. That was um, not as thorough as, as I could have been, um, but I just, I, I like that concept. I like the understanding that, that nature can guide us to what is appropriate. That's really the core uh, of what I want to share is that um, nature tells us whether or not these plants are going to be appropriate. So I've played around with nitrogen fixtures. I do see value in them. I just see that they can be overvalued and maybe if you, especially if you have heavy soil, there's, there's not a nitrogen fixture that's really that appropriate. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at the trees that I got growing. So the first on my list is the mimosa, which is right above my head. And mimosa is one of the more temperate of the nitrogen fixtures, meaning it can go pretty far north, uh, probably zone six, I think. Um, and this is a really great tree. It's typical leguminous nitrogen fixture. It shares the light. If you look up, you can see it's not a very dense canopy. And so it's allowing, it was for this citrus. So uh, citrus likes the shade. And the mimosa here was uh, casting some nice dappled shade, helping this satsuma to get established. So here are mimosa flowers. And I have seen the bees work them. So there must be some nectar pollen coming out, but not incredibly heavy. So not a really huge nectar source. Mainly this is a plant to grow for its dappled shade. All right, that's my valuation higher than the nitrogen fixation and its biomass generation. So you can chop it and drop it. So right across the way, if we look down here, um, we see some dead sticks. This is Cassia alata, which is another legume nitrogen fixer. You jump down. So unlike mimosa, the Cassias are all, not all, that's not true. Most of the cassias are fully subtropical, tropical. They're gonna to freeze to the ground here in Houston. But this will generate quite a bit of biomass and it's pulsing its biomass because it's freezing out or getting chopped down. And um, it is making some flowers that the bumblebees love, big um, you know, yellow panicles and uh, a decent tree because it grows really well in the hot summer. And I almost left, but there's another nitrogen fixer right here. This is kidney wood. This is um, Eisenhardia Texana. So native to more of the hill country, um, central Texas. It is up to about there. This plant's only a couple years old. Uh, maybe three, maybe three, maybe two in the ground. But um, this plant, so I have fairly well-drained soil. Um, I don't think this plant would do really well in heavy wet clay. So it needs to be dry. But this is a really good one for the bees. Um, I wish I think I see the start of flowers right there. Um, so yeah, look up kidney wood. If you have good drainage, you might give it a try. Here's a really pretty use of mimosa. So you see those leaves right up there? I loved the way this mimosa shot straight up 
and cast some really nice shade for um, that persimmon as it was establishing. And so again, it, it can get phased out, but that is really sharing the light. Now way up behind me, you'll see some seed pods. And this is another nitrogen fixture, a typical uh, bean seed pod. This is Lucana leucocephalia. I got seed from it from downtown Houston. It's just all over the place in Houston. So you can get seed pretty much anywhere and um, really fast growth, faster than mimosa. So it can shoot up those, you know, were all in one season. Um, and it had a trunk, you know, even bigger the season before. So this is the leaf of it. Um, it has a nice little white flower that the bees work really well. So it's definitely making some nectar. I've got a bunch of these around the property. They reproduce from seed. They grow really, really fast but they do freeze down in our hard winters. So this is Texas mountain laurel. This is one where it's not generating a lot of biomass. It, I planted it totally just for the flowers. Um, it is, you know, San Marcos, Austin, really common plant, uh, tough as nails when it's established, um, high pH. That's its native environment. It can grow out there. Um, and here it is growing. I'm gonna just keep it small, but um, here's a close up. Of the leaves this is texas mountain laurel you'll find it in the nursery but it's not going to cast shade for you it's just going to be more of a pretty shrub and yeah you could hack on it but it's more ornamental um, so here is um what is mirospernum susanum also known as arroyo sweetwood so this is another central texas west texas um, kind of a companion to that kidney wood this plant is not old enough for me to really give you much feedback. Hopefully it can grow, but I imagine it's going to grow slowly um, and prefer it maybe a little drier. We'll see. But another one to look up. If you can find it, maybe give it a try. There's a couple more nitrogen fixers back here. So first is uh, Erythrina. This is Erythrina cristigali. And um, I think it's called, I don't know, fireman's cap maybe. So you see the trunk it made there in the middle? Um, we just had a really hard winter, so it froze down to the ground. Um, there's Erythrina herbacea, which is a lower one, which is native, can go into central Texas. This one is totally subtropical. I wouldn't try it um, north of here even, because it'll just freeze down all the time. But again, you know, if you're freezing down all the time, it's just for biomass. This one is pretty to me, it's ornamental. But I really brought you back here for the acacias. This is the only acacia I have. Uh, this is Wright's acacia, uh, acacia ridei. And this is teeny. And this is just because, you know, the, the too much moisture. Um, I think <laughs> this is, and maybe it's about to take off, but you know, these are trees that are designed for really dry, harsh, full sun conditions. And this is gonna get swamped by fig and, and other things. So you know, don't overvalue the nitrogen fixture. Now, what was really cool, so this tree has been in the ground um, going in three years, three years. This was a one gallon pot and the tap root on this thing had circled the bottom of the pot probably 10 times. It was just crazy. Um, I, I ended up cutting it because uh, I felt like maybe it would, you know, shoot down again. And maybe that's why it's stunted, but that gives you an idea of what you know these kind of trees are designed for if they get up and going another tree that can share light probably not one you're going to chop and drop for a lot of biomass like you could with the lucana but maybe it has some value um, definitely going to make a little bit of nectar when it's in its flower we got some flowers on the kidney wood so here is a different kidney wood than that first one and you can see the nice panicles now not only you see there's a cucumber beetle on it um, not only is it uh, a good nectar source, but it smells really good too. So this is a good plant. And I just need to pull off this pepper vine and um, give this kidney wood some light. Moringa right here um, for biomass accumulation. I mean, this thing, by the end of summer, these are gonna be three or four inch diameter trunks. You know, this is the trunk of this Moringa that was just last year. You know, that's thicker than my arm, it fell over. But the ability to generate biomass is the ability to generate fertility. I found another nitrogen fixer. Um, this legume is called pigeon pea, and I don't have the scientific name on the top of my head. But um, this is not a tree, 
and it's not usually perennial for me because we've had harsh winters so I just save seed and it can be perennial absolutely um, but it just has frozen out and I think that's about it um, it's starting to get dark so as far as natives there is uh, a couple red buds so red bud is also a legume very native um, one that could be for biomass let's say you're in Houston or you're near Houston you don't have the drainage like I have you have a heavy soil you're gonna turn to whatever grows you're gonna turn to whatever grows well and that's gonna be Chinese tallow it's gonna be ash tree look right here behind you know this ash just in a couple years flying up out of there um, there's Chinese tallow just on the other side of there um, catalpa oh how'd I miss that one because that's a nitrogen fixer too that can handle heavy soil um, so this is um, maybe called candlestick tree no because the cassia has got that name anyway um, it's got these nice long seed pods I don't know if you can see them but uh, catalpa bignonioides so nitrogen fixer grows in heavy soil um, it's not going to freeze to the ground going to be a full-on tree this could be one that you introduce early on in your food forest and um, I love it it's kind of Dr. Susie. it actually grows like this like it, it grows on these huge long skinny stalks now it was at first a single and I cut it down for light so I kind of coppiced it and um, now it's up doing it again but this would be a great tree to add if you wanted to grow some poles essentially you know look at the value there of really really straight poles um, I'm sure they wouldn't last that long but I planted it to cast some shade you know so this is the Ujikitsu right here that's the um, high value tree and oh another nitrogen fixture dang I am forgetting there's just too many so this is Parkinsonia um, this is Jerusalem thorn this is um, Palo Verde that's another common name um, I think that's the most common common name so um, <laughs> there's there's probably more I'm forgetting too but this one is definitely top of the list of tough dry it grows all over Houston it can handle a little bit of the heavy soil as long as it's not overly wet but this is a tough as nails deep rooted tree and it's providing a lot of value so it's gonna provide nectar with good flowers it's gonna provide edible you know minor kind of like the lucana with uh, young seed pods and probably flowers as well um, and it's going to provide a really nice filtered light so you can see how the light just kind of shoots through there these are trees that could help to jump start some fertility if there's something lacking but do recognize the permabling that is the nitrogen fixing you know food forest tree and um, and and see a lot of value so if I was starting over I would look for what was growing and it's probably gonna be elm and oak and ash and Chinese tallow and allow those to grow and generate biomass for you because fertility comes through biomass even more so than through nitrogen fixing in the soil if you've got leaves if you've got organic matter you've got fertility so that's the big takeaway I want you guys to have from this video hopefully you learned some new plants and uh, enjoyed the little bit of the tour and I'll catch y'all next time peace